successful, and I think they know that. So uh, I think there's an incentive for them to really play well tonight. Okay, Coach, thanks very much. Good luck tonight. Hey, guys, thanks. For and that was head coach Abdatore of the Blairsville Wildcats, Abdatore, and uh, again, talking very candidly about a season that uh, opened uh, with some high hopes and uh, now comes to uh, a conclusion, Bill, looking for some pride in Bobcat football. You know, we've talked about it among ourselves, Vince, but uh, I have to say that I, I've been very impressed with Abdatore. Uh, he's been very open with us, as you said. He's been very candid in his comments. Uh, he hasn't uh, tried to... Uh, to sweeten anything that he's talked about. Uh, he always usually tells you like it is, and uh, he doesn't really mince any words, and and we appreciate that. I know he's been very accessible with us against, uh, even after some tough losses and before some tough games. He's always made time for us, and uh, we really appreciate that, and, and I, I really think he's done a, a terrific job with this team, even though uh, the record isn't exactly what maybe he had hoped for, but uh, uh, Ab's a good guy, and uh, you know we wish him the best. Uh, the Bobcats will try to uh, end the 1992 season on a positive note. Bill and I will have a closer look at tonight's game right after this. It's the simplest fundraiser ever. Equal housing lender, 53 East Market Street, Blairsville, in the heart of Bobcat country. Good luck, Bobcats, from the new J.K. Tire Corral on 157 West Market Street, Blairsville. To celebrate the 92 football season, J.K. Tire Corral is offering the Goodyear Laramie year-round tire for as low as $35.95. Yes, $35.95. Also, stop in for brake work and wheel alignment. J.K. Tire Corral also does lube, oil, and filter for just $16.95 on most vehicles. J.K. Tire Corral, 157 West Market Street, Blairsville. Go, Bobcats! Bentley Development, formerly Bentley Coal Company, wishes the Blairsville Bobcat football team good luck this season. Bentley Development has been in business for over 20 years. Bentley Development provides earth moving for businesses. Bentley Development also rents high lifts, dozers, and other earth moving equipment as well. Located in the Sorrell Industrial Park on Old Route 22, Bentley Development offers continued support of the Blairsville football team and all the other activities of our neighborhood children. You're listening to Blairsville Football on Lucky 106.3 FM. And back at Blairsville, the Bobcats about to kick off and defend the goal to the right. Berlin Mountaineers with blue helmets with a white stripe and blue numerals. And the Bobcats will move right to left through your living room this evening. So pull up a chair and get ready for the final game of the 1992 season. And Bill, it seems really weird to be saying that. Sure does. Uh, this season went very quickly. We're seeing uh, Jess Hauser ready to kick off wearing his third different number in three weeks. It's like Wheel of Fortune with Jess <laughs> Hauser. Number 22 tonight after number double zero last week. Matt Four and Jason Bear are deep, and Bear will take the ball to 14 to the 15 and across the 20 to the 25. Has a hole up the middle, breaks the tackle, fumbles the football, and Bill Wilson falls on it at the 34 yard line for Blairsville. So there's a the big break that uh, Abdatori was hoping for. Bill Wilson gets the recovery, and Bill, I didn't see who made the tackle. I think it was Marty Foreman. Uh, we talked about him being one of the seniors playing his last game tonight. Marty Foreman made the hit on Jason Bear, and the football came out. So, so the Bobcats get the first break of the evening, and a, and a big break it is for Blairsville. First and 10, Greg Prochetti leads them out of the huddle. Greg Kunkel is a lone setback. And the pitch is to Kunkel to the near side. Penalty flags are down, and Kunkel will be hit and wrapped up at the point of attack. John Trolla coming over to make the stop at the line of scrimmage, and it looks like motion again, Bill. Motion penalty against him. Illegal motion will move the ball back to the 39-yard line and make a first and 15. Kunkel was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but they'll take the penalty. Out of the huddle they'll come now. They'll go from the I formation. Styles the flanker to the near side, Mike Clawson to the far side. Prochetti running the option, pitches the ball back to Ryan Morningstar. Morningstar into the open at the 30, and all the way down to the 26-yard line, where Travis and Grody stops Morningstar, who's back after an injury last week. Yeah, nice to see Travis back. He was in the tailback spot that time. Got a nice kickout block from uh, Eric, or excuse me, Greg Kunkel, uh, to get him around the corner. We see him coming off the sideline here, and uh, he is seemed to be limping just a, just slightly. He had that leg injury that he missed the entire football game last week, did Ryan Morningstar. 
He is shy of the first down by two yards, so a pickup of 13 on the play, make it second down and two. I formation, Wilson and Styles as receivers to the near side. The give is to Kunkel, and Greg slumps down just as he takes the ball from Perchetti, so he'll drop for a two-yard loss, coming in to make sure he didn't get back up was Dwayne Brick. Well, that was some defensive play uh, coming in there to make the stop. Uh, Brick just was in the backfield almost. A loss of two, that'll bring up a third down and four for the Bobcats, trying to capitalize. Greg Perchetti almost didn't get that football handed off. That's how quickly uh, the penetration was on the, the Berlin defense. Styles to the right, Clawson to the near side. Brzezanski, the tight end, is on the near side. He'll go from the eye. And Frechetti staggers the cadence and gets the movement in the offensive line. And jumping across for the offside penalty will be Heath Skirfield. And so that should be enough for a first down, Bill. Yeah, that's going to move. So the Bobcats will get the first down. And they will send Styles to the right and Clawson to the near side. Brzezanski, the tight end, is on the near side. They'll go out of the eye this time with Christopher as the tailback. Perchetti sets his team, fakes the couple, and gives the ball to Christopher. And Christopher turns his way down across the 20-yard line and down to possibly the 18, where he will go down in the arms of Corey Petro. Nice inside running that time by uh, Brian Christopher. We hadn't seen Christopher inside so much as he, he's been the outside runner, the sweep runner for Blairsville throughout much of the season. We mentioned that Mike Sigafos out tonight. Uh, we're seeing Corey Bracken uh, in that lineup tonight uh, in his place. Corey Bracken, again, one of the seniors playing his last final game tonight. We'll also see Brett Ewing maybe in that spot, as Abdutori told us before the game. But Bracken in now. High formation receiver on each side. Frechetti running the options on the near side. Pitches the ball back to Morningstar. Has trouble fielding it now. Is able to get it and get down to the 16-yard line where the Mountaineer pursuit will bring him down. Leading the play was John Troja. J.D. Hogger was the person who came through and actually made the hit on Perchetti, forced him to pitch the ball, and then uh, Greg took a hit from Hogger anyway. And then uh, Berlin did a nice job of uh, stringing out the, uh, the play until they were able to come up with, uh, with the tackle. So that'll bring up a third down, and we'll call it four for the Bobcats. They'll put two receivers to the near side and go out of the eye formation. And, Bill, we like to see they like to pitch the ball to this side, even though it's the short side of the field. They'll give the ball to Christopher. Christopher trying to go up the middle, churning down to the 15-yard line, and is ridden down on the play by Joe Villeneuve. So Joe Villeneuve making the stop. will bring the play in for Greg Perchetti. Yeah, we're seeing Morningstar and Christopher uh, switch back and forth at the tailback spot. And then, of course, Styles and Bill Wilson uh, switching at the one receiver position with uh, Mike Hauser out. Styles and Wilson are to the near side. Perchetti rolling the option to the far side. Pitches it back to Morningstar. Makes a nice cut. Has the first down and is down to the 10-yard line. Finally tripped up on the play by Travis and Grody. Tell you what, that was mostly Ryan Morningstar on his own. That was a pitch to his right, and it, by all rights, he should have been wrapped up in the backfield. He just made a nice early game turnover. Opening kickoff. And the ball was fumbled away. Blairsville coming up with it at the 34-yard line of a Berlin. The backs are split behind Frechetti. Styles is to the right. Clausen is the slot man. And the give is to Ryan Morningstar on the counter. A run of Greg Kunkel, and Kunkel is into the end zone for a Blairsville touchdown. And a nice fake by Greg Frechetti. Very nice fake. It was a wing back reverse. Uh, Kunkel lined up in the one of the wing back spots, faked the handoff inside to, uh, to Ryan Morningstar. And then uh, coming on the counter was Kunkel. And he just burst right through the middle showing good speed and good power, carrying one defender into the end zone. And he takes it in for the score from about 10 yards out. Is that what it was? That it was 10 yards exactly. So Blairsville gets on the board and capitalizing, as we said, on that, uh, that big break to open the game. Hauser will attempt to kick at the post to the right. The ball is down. Flags are down. Hauser's kick is good. But I don't think it's going to matter because they blew the play dead before. So 648 is what shows on the clock. So, Bill, they run almost five minutes off the clock in, in that drive. That's exactly the kind of drive that Abitore wants to see. First of all, it, it, it results in a touchdown, which is the most important thing, of course. But it, it takes up some nice time. And uh, they picked up some key first downs on uh, tough third down situations, one fourth down situations. 
Another motion penalty against the Bobcats, so that'll move Hauser back and make this a 25-yard extra point attempt at the post to the left. The ball is down out of a Preschetti hold, and Hauser's kick is high enough, long enough, and good. So, with 6.48 to go in the first quarter, the Bobcats break on top, 7-0. Bill and I will be right back. This season at Foodland, look for Austin's A1 Bleak. Ball on Lucky 106.3 FM. And back at Flairsville Stadium where the Bobcats have gone up on a 7-0 lead thanks to a fumble recovery and a 10-yard run by Greg Kunkel. And they came back, too. Uh, they started that drive with a, with a motion penalty that set them at first and 15. They faced one third down and short and then a fourth down and short and picked up both of them. The and the kick will come down to Matt Fuhr, and Matt Fuhr will bring it out across the 30-yard line and be run out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Jason Brzezanski was over there, as was Phil has seen this season. Right now they're in the wishbone. They'll go out of the wishbone right now. Mike Brandt is calling the signal. Gives the ball to the second back through. That is John Troya. And John Troa is across the 40-yard line and out to about the 48-yard line. Yeah, he had nice yardage. Coming up with uh, seven, eight, almost nine yards on the play. Five fifty-three to go in the first period. Now they'll go in the power eye, Bill. And jumping a little too soon was the up man. That was Matt Four. Yeah, just anticipated the count and stepped down a little bit too soon. So that may have thrown Abitore off just a bit to kick him out in uh, the first play from scrimmage to see the wishbone. Bobcats was the opening kickoff recovery, which enabled them to get up 7 nothing and keep Berlin's offense off the field. Our eye formation again. Brant sets his team at second and seven. Gives the ball to the up back. and taking the ball up across the 40-yard line and very short of midfield is Chad Warbacek. So again, Berlin uh, that time once again running from, uh, from the wishbone formation. Uh, I don't know how much that is throwing off the, the Blairsville defense, but this is a new wrinkle that uh, they had not seen previous. And now they switch back to the power eye. Power eye formation again at first and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Brant calling the signal. And he gives the ball to the first back through. That is Matt Four. And Four is into the secondary and all the way down to the 38-yard line where Brett Ewing finally wrestles him down. And it's another Berlin first down. That's a big gainer. And that's uh, one of the problems the Blairsville defense has had throughout this season. Is Mountaineers at the 38-yard line with 4.51 to go in the first period. Bobcats up 7-0 on a 10-yard Greg Kunkel run. They'll go from the power eye formation this time as Brant sets them at first and ten. Calling the signal. Fakes to the up back. Pitches to the second man through. That is John Troja. And Troja turns the corner across the 30 and all the way down to the 22-yard line. Finally brought down by Greg Kunkel. Well, they've run so many times with the fullback. That time they went to, with the pitch. And Troja showed good speed to get around the corner. It uh, looked like a couple of guys had a shot at him, but uh, he ran through a couple of tackles and uh, picked up another first down, as you said, about the 22. Berlin finishing the block downfield as well. They did a nice job with the wide receivers out there blocking downfield. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Power eye formation again. Brant sets his team. Bobcat defense digs in. They'll give the ball to the second back through again. That is Troja. And Troja has missed this time at the line of scrimmage and brought down. Going down in the arms of Jeff Hauser. And of course, Jeff Hauser had a big game here uh, about two, three weeks ago. Hauser again. is a sophomore. Eric Elliott is a sophomore. Brzezanski is a junior. Yeah, there's a lot of people, but Glenn Stuyvesant will be back next season as well. Mike Hauser, Brian Christopher will be back. Eric Eamon will be back. Wesley Hopkins will be back. Joel Smith will be back when he recovers from his injury. They'll go from the power eye now. Second and eight from the Bobcat 20-yard line. Brant gives the ball to the up back. That is Gumbert, and Gumbert is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and brought down. DJ Joke and Jason Smith are in on the stop. It's a short yardage gain that time. Uh, the uh, 
Leslieville middle of the defense doing a pretty good job. Third down now and seven at the 19-yard line. So a big defensive play coming up for the Bobcats here. And now they'll abandon the power eye and go from a straight eye formation to put two receivers out there. Motion man is Matt Four coming to the near to the far side. The pitch is to the far side. And the pitch is to Troja. Troja turns the corner, but he will run right into the defense. Brett Ewing was over there. DJ Joke and Jason Berzanski. Brett Ewing was the first player to get through. He got penetration, forced Troja to go a little bit deeper than he wanted to, trying to make the turn. And then, as you said, it was DJ Doak and uh, Jason Brzezanski coming over and finishing him off. So a nice big third down play. Uh, they'll be going for it on fourth down, but they have about seven yards to make up. They're going for a field goal, Bill, at the post to the right. Matt Four is out for what would be a 36-yard field goal, and it will come out of a Mike Yost hold. At the post to the right, the ball is down, and the kick is blocked right into the line of scrimmage. There was some trouble with the hold, and so the attempt will be no good at the 20-yard line. It's Four had the double clutch. Yeah, the, the snap was low. It wasn't handled very well, and then uh, Four just never got the football off the ground. Come on, they ran three plays that gained three yards. That's right, and a nice, a, a nice defensive play on that on that third down play, as we mentioned, uh, Brzezanski and uh, and Ewing and Ewing coming up on a big on that third down. The pitch is to Kunkel, and Kunkel has good running room out to the 27-yard line. He is finally wrestled down on the play by John Troja with a 1.14 to play in the first period. And the encouraging thing about this, Vince, is, is that the uh, right now it looks like the Blairsville offense is picking up. Uh, the, the running game seems to be going well. Greg Kunkel uh, bursting through some holes. Abdatori saying that he wanted to throw the ball a little more tonight, but uh, the sort of damp conditions, the field is a little slick, although it's not raining, and the temperature is in the low 40s. They'll go from the I formation. Perchetti will give the ball to Greg Kunkel, and Kunkel has good running room out to the 36-yard line. Nice hesitation that time. I think it was Ryan Morningstar, Ryan Morningstar my mistake. Star, right. And uh, he, he waited for the hole to open and then uh, running through it. Uh, just that hesitation. I don't know what happened because I didn't watch the World Series. I couldn't be <laughs> I there. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. First and 10 for the Bobcats in what will all likelihood be the final play of the first period. They'll go from the eye of formation, receivers to the right. Bruschetti gives the ball, fakes it to Kunkel, pitches it to Christopher, trying to get to the outside, and is hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down Jason Bear with a nice play there, Bill, to drop him for maybe a one-yard loss. That was a nice defensive play. I thought that was a pretty good fake by Bruschetti, too. Uh, it looked like Greg Kunkel had the football running up the middle. Uh, Bruschetti kept it on the tip and then pitched it out to uh, Christopher. But uh, Berlin was not fooled by the play. They strung it out for no gain. Means when it comes to buying or selling their real estate, they get results for their clients. Chestnut Ridge Realty, 9 West Market Street, Blairsville. Best of luck, Bobcats in 92. Great food at a terrific price. 106.3 FM. And Vince Capozzi and Bill Brown back with you as we begin the second period of play here on Senior Night 1992 for the Blairsville Bobcats. They'll have it second down and 10 from their own 36-yard line. The backs are split behind Freshetti. Takes the handoff to the up back, gives it the morning star. There are whistles and flags everywhere. And it looks like, again, motion on the Bobcats, Bill. Yeah, never even got started on that play. So that's going to set them back uh, into a second and 15. The illegal procedure is the call. Second down now and 15. The ball will go back. It's only the second possession for the Bobcats in this football game. Their first drive ate up about five minutes. The backs are split. Styles is the flanker. Fakes the handoff. Rochetti will roll. Look to throw. He's got all sorts of trouble. Just throws the ball up for grabs. And the ball is intercepted by Jason Bear. And Bear will go down at the 49-yard line. The intended receiver was Jeff Stiles, and as Freshetti rolled to his left, he was getting a lot of pressure. Uh, it looked like uh, number 70, Eric Niccolo, was in there, and Harry Ritchie. And Heath Skirko was also in pressuring him, and he just threw the ball up. So he was rolling. Berlin Mountaineers, who have shown some spark on offense themselves. So we'll see what they do. Berlin from midfield for the power eye formation again. 
Mike Brandt, the quarterback, barking the signal. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Is going long, has the man there. That's in Grody, and it's incomplete at the 16-yard line. In and out of his hands. Wow, just a straight fly pattern that time by Ingrody. And uh, that was, I believe, Berlin's first pass of the game. And Branch is stepping back. It was uh, just a, a straight fly, as we said, on first down. And Grody had, the, uh, had Mike Clausen beaten. Clausen uh, was making up the ground, but uh, just could not catch up with the football. So the pass falls incomplete. And believe it or not, Mike Clausen still looking for his first interception of the 92 season. And we are nine games into it. High formation, Brandt calling the signals again. Gives the handoff to John Troja. And Troja battles his way across midfield and all the way down to the 43-yard line where Jason Smith will bring him down. And he will be shy of the first down by about three yards. But there's a motion penalty against Berlin. So that'll bring everything back. I'm just going to say how Troja was showing pretty nice speed there and uh, getting about seven or eight yards on the play. But it's all for naught. The motion penalty will set it back, fall on the ground. But uh, the first drive, they just uh, stalled out at about the 20-yard line. Nice defense by, by Blairsville. And this time, a uh, motion penalty sets them back. They're back at the 44-yard line, second and 15. The pitch will come to the right side to John Troja, looking to turn the corner. Gets back to about the 47-yard line where Kunkel wraps him up. He had some help from Jason Berzanski. And also coming over was Eric Imus. So pretty nice defense that time. Uh, that play really not going anywhere. And so. actually Berlin Brothers Valley Valley High School, if you want to get technical. Single setback now is John Troja. Three receivers to the near side for Mike Brandt. Brandt will draw, drop back play action pass, looking to throw the ball into the flat. And the pass is complete over there to Travis and Grody. And Grody is back to maybe the line of scrimmage, where Glenn Stuyvesant wraps him up with some help from Eric Guyman again. i tell you what, he only got in on a tackle late, Eric Eamon, but he's the person who made that play. Uh, there was kind of a misdirection uh, as, as Brandt looked, went back to pass. He was looking downfield to his left and then came back and, and fired the ball over to Troja. Uh, he took it on the right side, but Eamon read the play, came up, uh, as we said, not able to make the initial tackle, but was uh, helping on the stop at the end of the play. And it's Tom Yost dropping back to punt. Their punter, Brad Bittner, was injured earlier. So we'll see what Yost can do. High snap, Yost fields it. Brzezanski coming in after him. He drops it, and Brzezanski can't get him. Yost finally gets it off and blasts the ball down to the 25. It takes a Berlin roll across the 15, down to the 10, and maybe the 6. Oh, my goodness, what a play, Bill. I don't know who was more surprised, whether it was Yost or Brzezanski. Uh, the, the snap was high, as you said. Yost was uh, able to knock it down. But Brzezanski, uh, who was putting on the rush, was so surprised to see Yost with the ball. He tried to tackle him. Yost stepped out of it and then uh, stumbled, ahead for, two stumbled ahead for two yards and then punted the football away and got a great punt. Almost a rollout punt. <laughs> Taking a page from the Ligonier Valley Mountaineers. Mountaineers, who also had the same rollout punt in their playbook. 8.49 to play now in the second period in the Bobcats from their own six yard line. Perchetti has the back split behind him there. Morningstar and Kunkel. Perchetti gives the ball to Kunkel and Kunkel is out across the five yard line and out to about the nine. So give him four on the play, make it second down and six. Little cross buck action that time. Morningstar going one way and then Kunkel countering. Kunkel took the handoff and just trying to get them some breathing room from out underneath the, the shadow of their own goal post. He got out near the 10. The Bobcats enjoying a 7-0 lead. If you joined us late, you missed all the excitement on the opening kickoff. Matt Four fumbled the football, and Bill Wilson fell on it at the 35-yard line. The Bobcats went 35 yards in about five minutes to the final 10, coming on a Greg Kunkel 10-yard touchdown run, and that's why we're up 7-0 the Bobcats at 7.52. Backs again are split, dual slots for Freshetti. Gives the ball to Kunkel on the delay, and Kunkel is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and brought down. Matt Four led the charge from his safety position. That play didn't uh, really materialize well from the start. Uh, looked like a kind of a, a missed handoff just a little bit. Uh, with down and eight now, or rather third down and eight. We'll see if Abdesori elects to go to the air or whether he'll just keep it on the ground. 
Single setback is Morningstar. Perchetti will throw from his own goal line, getting weak side pursuit, and has the pass complete to Morningstar. Morningstar with big running room, breaks the tackle, and is all the way out to the 26-yard line, where he is finally brought down by Jack Gumbert. Styles and Wilson were the receivers downfield, but Perchetti, as he rolled to his right, couldn't find anyone. He was getting heavy pressure, and Morningstar was simply the, uh, the safety valve receiver. He just dumped the football out to Morningstar, and uh, Ryan made another nice play. It's about the third nice play we've seen him make tonight, with catching the football and uh, picking up another tw uh, about 10 yards or 15 yards after the play, after the catch. The ball is moved out to the 27-yard line of the Bobcats. So almost a 19-yard pickup on that play. The pitch is to Christopher coming to the far side. Needs a block, gets it, turns the corner, and Christopher is finally brought down by the shirt at the 35-yard line by Harry Ritchie. The pitch to the left side, uh, Greg Kunkel providing a good lead block, looking at him on the sideline. Meanwhile, Morningstar back in the game. Dolly, the signals from the eye formation is Preschetti. Dual slots, gives the ball to Kunkel. Kunkel hit at the line of scrimmage, spins off a block, and may have the first down out around the 36 and a half yard line. He was pursued on the play by Jack Gumbert and finally felled by Harry Ritchie. I'll tell you what, if he got the first down, he did it all on his own. Uh, he got to the line of scrimmage with. On a Halloween night, Bill is perfect. 5.16 to go. In the first half, 7-0 Bobcats. Three receivers to the near side. Brzezanski is split to the far side, and he'll pitch the ball to Kunkel, and Kunkel was hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down Tom Yostin on the tackle. Also coming up was Dwayne Brick. I'll tell you who else made a nice play in that. Travis and Grody uh, just stepped right into Kunkel and uh, stood him up. And then uh, the other two players you mentioned came over and finished him off. But it was, a, it was a nice play by Ingrodi on defense. So that'll make it second down and 12. Clawson will check into the lineup to get the play from Frank Brzezanski. Right, Dual receivers to the near side will be Clawson and Style. Morningstar will be a receiver to the far side, and Brzezanski will be in the slot out there. And Perchetti will roll to the near side, looks to throw. It's a screen pass back the other way to Brzezanski. Completed 30, 35, needs a block. Gets it at the 45 and is all the way out to the 48-yard line. And that's good enough for a first down and a well-conceived play, Bill. Well, that was well-conceived and well-executed, too. It was nicely set up. Uh, they had Brzezanski wide open on the screen to the left side after Perchetti had rolled to the right. Made it look like the flow of the play was going to the right. He had his receivers play almost exactly that way and scored a touchdown on it. A very effective play. It is a very effective play. When you have pursuits such as the Mountaineers were coming there. And there was almost no one on the other side of the field there. Uh, they had like one person over there. He was able to slow Brzezanski down, or that could have gone for even bigger yardage. Dwayne Brick was the only man. minutes ago. So uh, they're not quite to midfield yet, but uh, they've eaten five minutes off the second period clock. I formation. They'll give the ball to Ryan Morningstar, and Morningstar will get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all before he is brought down on the play and coming up to make the tackle for Berlin was Eric Niccolo. So Niccolo comes in and makes the stop for the uh, Berlin Mountaineers make it second down now and eight. The ball just shy of midfield at about the 48 yard line. A couple of big plays on this drive so far. Of course, one of them being the uh, the screen, the, the little dump off pass to uh, to Ryan Morningstar to pick up a, a first down on a third and long play. Dual receivers to the right. They'll go out of the eye formation. Kunkel takes the inside handoff, breaks the tackle into Berlin territory, and he'll be down at the 30, or rather the 47 yard line. Literally stepped out of a tackle that time. Looked like they had his uh, leg wrapped up. And he just pulled his uh, foot through the play and kept moving. And got about three or four yards. Third down and four at the 47-yard line. So far tonight, they've had good success on, on third down plays and on uh, even some fourth down and short yardage plays that they've, uh, they've been able to pick up the first down. Evidenced by the fact that we haven't seen Rich Stock low for punting tonight. High formation. 
Morningstar takes the handoff and burrows his way down to the 45 yard line, maybe the 44. John Troja will bring him down. He'll be shy of the first down. And Evatori will have a decision to make now. The ball just across the 45 yard line, so it will be fourth down and a long three. And Christopher will bring an offensive play in, so Evatori shows some. Some confidence not vision, but we've stopped them as well and on a fourth down play we think we can pick it up minute 24 to go in the half to give it to Kunkel he has the first down and is all the way down to the 37 yard line of Berlin Kunkel really firing off the football tonight uh, from that fullback spot uh, quick to the hole and uh, just plowed right through and sidesteps the man breaks the tackle and is run out of bounds by John Troja at the 35 yard line and they're saying that he didn't get out of bounds well the clock's still, running. Standing. Sure the clock's still like running with a minute to go. And this reminder that you're listening to Bobcat football on WLCY FM 106, Blairsville, Indiana. 49 seconds to go, and I don't believe Freshetti is not aware that he didn't get out of out of the uh, out of bounds. So now they'll have to the Bobcats will have to waste the timeout. I don't know. Drive and go for a tying touchdown. Uh, last week they put out the score in the final minutes. And uh, so here they are again with uh, 42 seconds and a chance to, to get it into scoring position. Freshetti will throw, gets good protection, home run ball for Clawson. He has a step on the defender. Clawson has the football and is brought down at the six yard line with 34 seconds to play. Nice pass and catch that time. Clawson had the defender beat. That was Jack Gumbert. And uh, got a step behind him and Greg Freshetti just put the football out there for him. 34 seconds to go. The clock stops while they reset the chains. Freshetti will set them up, calling the signal with no huddle. 33 seconds to go. First and goal for the seven. Freshetti gives the ball to Kunkel right up the middle. Kunkel breaks the tackle, hits to the goal line, and is down at about the three-yard line with 25 seconds to go. And the Bobcats will burn their final time out of the half. Boy, Kunkel looked like he was going in, too, and they finally dragged him down about the two. I think so, too. Uh, when you consider uh, as much time as it's taken off the clock and where they started the drive and how far they've come. Second and goal, do receive goal receivers to the left, Clawson to the near side. Rochetti will throw over the middle. The ball is batted down, incomplete. They were looking for Styles on the quick cut-in pattern and getting his big mid up with Tom Yost to knock the football down. I don't know. I, I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, with the success that Kunkel's had running inside, I thought maybe they would just uh, just push it up inside with Kunkel. But uh, trying to hit uh, Styles, as you said, on that slanting pattern, it was almost, it was batted away and almost intercepted. Now, this is an interesting piece of strategy. Wes Hopkins is into the lineup. And they'll go from the power eye this time. Hopkins has joined Jess Hauser and Kunkel in the power eye. Kunkel in the tailback position. Follows Hauser and it stopped at the line of scrimmage with 16 seconds to go. Bobcat's going to have to hurry. Yeah, now's the problem. And maybe that's why they didn't run a running play before because now they have to, to get into position. Seven Time seconds to out. go. Fourth down and goal. Four seconds to go. Bobcat's in some confusion. Two seconds, one. Can he get it off? Freshetti straight up the gut near the goal line. The time runs out and he is stopped shy of the, of the touchdown. Wow. So again, the Bobcats with some excitement in the second, in, in the waning moments of the first half, but they come. Low monthly fee, you'll receive 15 valuable benefits, including unlimited Mac card transactions and a one quarter percent VIP discount rate on a qualifying S&T installment loan. Call or stop by our Route 22 office or visit our office in downtown Blairsville. S&T Bank. In Blairsville and Shaw Insurance. In the dead center of the field, and Matt Four will kick off. Forward, right-footed soccer style kicker, high end over end kick. Will come down to Christopher at the 12. Christopher running laterally to the 15 and trying to dance around the man, gets across the man at the 20 and out to the 21-yard line. Stopped on the play by Heath Gerfield and kind of a bizarre run there, Bill. Absolutely, he was running to the right almost. And I the 21-yard line, it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the Blairsville Bobcats. And the pitch comes to Kunkel. And Kunkel looking to turn the corner off the right side across the 25 and out near the 31-yard line. Written down by Lonnie Kogenauer on the play. And you called it, uh, Vince, just a pitch right. Uh, Kunkel, we've seen him run that play all year, uh, showing good power, as we said tonight, pretty good speed uh, getting to the corner. 
And he was able to pick up about seven or eight on the play. Second down and two now with 11 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the third period. Bobcat scored on the opening possession and that's stood up so far. 7-0 Blairsville. Prochetti pitches the ball to Christopher. Christopher running for his life at the 25-yard line. And Brian Christopher will be ridden down on the play by John Troja for a loss of five all the way back, or maybe even more, a loss of six all the way back to the 24-yard line. It was that quick, long pitch that we've seen them do with Christopher, uh, just trying to get him to the corner as quickly as possible. But uh, Berlin had that defense very well. You mentioned Troja coming up from a linebacker spot, saw the play and just uh, ran him down for a big loss. Third down and seven, passing down possibly for the Bobcats. Dual receivers to the near side, a man on the slot. Prochetti will look to throw, a little swing past the Morningstar. Morningstar, Swivel hits it out to the 28-yard line. That's as far as he'll get before Lonnie Kokenauer will bring him down. And for the first time tonight, the Bobcats are going to punt. That was basically the same play we saw them pick up a first down. So Berlin draws the, the first big series of the uh, second half and stops the Bobcats. So Doc Losa will punt, gets a good snap, and Rich kicks the air out of the ball. It will hit at the 20, or rather the 40-yard line and be fielded there by Jason Bear. Bear running laterally and will be taken down. Hogtied by Eric Elliott all the way down at the 32-yard line. And the big... Defensive player comes and uh, ended up giving up too much ground. He probably lost 10 on that from where he uh, fielded the punt. Would not be denied. They'll go for the power eye formation now. Will Berlin and Brant will look to throw a home run ball again. Going long and the pass is incomplete. They were looking again for Travis and Grody at the 35 yard line and Mike Clausen broke the play up even though he didn't make uh, any contact but uh, and Grody not able to pull it in in large part because of Mike Clawson's defense. Second and 10 now from the 32-yard line. And the give is to the first man through. That is John Troja. Penalty markers are down, and Troja battles his way out to the 40-yard line where he is brought down by Brett Ewing. That one's coming back, a wide receiver on the far side. Um, I have to find a number here. Matt Nakich. Uh, just stepped out a little too soon. So we're going to have a, a motion penalty, I'm sure. And that is what it is. Mountaineer penalty is illegal procedure. Make it second down at 15 for the 27, and it's the Mountaineers who so far have been shooting themselves in the foot, Bill. Yeah, they've had a couple of uh, penalties on, on first and second downs and put themselves in, the, in that second and long position. Brant will throw long again. He is looking for Matt Four, and Four is unable to come up with the football at midfield. The pass was a little short. I'm not sure whether he did catch the football and he was out of bounds or he didn't catch the football. His back was to us to the far side, and we couldn't really... Your whole uh, thinking about how you have to, to pick up the first down. Uh, you almost have to get five yards or six yards at a clip uh, instead of the uh, the three or four that you need when you only have a, a first and ten. 8.47 to go in the third period. 7-0 Bobcats, third and 15 for the 27th. Brand play action pass. will look to throw two receivers in the pattern. Going long again, and the pass is incomplete at the 45-yard line. They were looking for W.J. Cobra there. Clawson again on the coverage. I'll tell you, for a team that is known primarily for running the football, they don't mind throwing it downfield, do they? Matter of fact, that's all they throw it is downfield. <laughs> Everything's downfield, about 20, 25 yards. So that will bring up a fourth down at 15, and we'll see. It will be Tom Yost again. Brian Christopher deploys at his own 38-yard line. Remember the... Berlin squad had a bad snap last time. This time Yost gets a good one. Here they come trying to block it. They just miss it. And the kick comes out and will come down at the 40-yard line of the Bobcats. Roll down to the 39. And that's where it will be down by Matt Four. Eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third period. Cover you for farm, automobile, business, life, pensions, mobile homes, motorcycle, and hospitalization. For peace of mind, review your current insurance with the Alcovasic Agency, Market Street, Blairsville, or Shaw Insurance, Route 422, Alderton. The Alcovasic Insurance Agency for all forms of insurance. 
They give it to Christopher on the reverse. Christopher turns the ball upfield, has good running room, and is all the way out to midfield before he is finally brought down on the play by Tom Yost. And a little razzle-dazzle there for the Bobcats gives them a first down. Yeah, Christopher lined up as a slot man that time and came on the reverse and took the pitch. Actually broke a couple of tackles in the backfield uh, to avoid a loss and ended up picking up the first down. So a nice run by Brian Christopher. First and ten Bobcats and a little more sustained now on their drive this time. They'll come out of the huddle. Freshetti will set them in the eye formation. Slot man is Clawson. Freshetti sets his team, fakes the Kunkel, gives the ball to Morningstar, hitting the backfield. Ryan fights his way across the 50 and down to the 49-yard line before he is finally tackled on the play by Travis and Grody. That was a fairly amazing run for only one yard. He broke three tackles on, along the way, and just to get that one. Styles and Wilson will go to the left. Brzezanski, the tight end, is on the right side. Eye formation. Prochetti rolling to the near side, pitches the ball back to Christopher. It's loose and picked up by Berlin. Coming in to fall on the football is Lonnie Kokenauer. And had Kokenauer elected to pick up the football, Bill, he would have run for a touchdown. That's right. He made sure that he had the recovery, but uh, that football was pitched back. First and 10 from the 37-yard line now for Berlin in Bobcat territory. Two back formation now, a man to the slot to the near side, and the give is to Tom Yost, and Yost burrows his way down to the 34-yard line. So we saw Blairsville take advantage of a fumble recovery at the beginning of the game. We'll see what Berlin can do with this fumble recovery in this generally the same vicinity. D.J. Doak makes the tackle, but he picks up three, makes a second down and seven at the, at the Blairsville 34-yard line. Six minutes exactly to go in the period. Grant sets his team to go from the power eye formation again, and the give is to the up back, first man through, and that is Alicia Ogbaum. And Ogbaum fumbles the football at the 30-yard line. Everybody dies for it. They're fighting in the pile. Kunkel comes up with it, but let's see what they say. Yeah, there's no signal yet. Bobcat football. There it is. Ogbaum fumbled, everybody dived into the pile, and it was Greg Kunkel who came up with the football, and so they trade turnovers, and the next big defensive play goes to Blairsville. That was a big defensive play, because uh, if, if Berlin takes advantage of that last fumble and goes down and scores, uh, this game is tied, but now Blairsville gets the football back after a, a nice defensive stand and a recovery by Greg Kunkel. First and 10, Perchetti has the back split behind him. Calling the signal, fakes to Christopher, gives it on the counter play to Kunkel. Kunkel fights off a couple of tackles and gets out to the 33-yard line where Jack Gumbert will finally polish him off. Things have tough, toughened up considerably now in the trenches there. Uh, it's a really tough, tough going, running inside as Kunkel finds. Dual receivers to the near side. Kunkel is in the slot to that side. Morningstar, the lone setback. Freshetti will throw, gets weak side pressure, throws over the middle of the pass is complete to Clawson. Clawson has it at the 40-yard line and gets out of bounds at the 40, about the 44-yard line. Run out over there by Harry Ritchie, and it'll be good enough for a Bobcat first down. Clawson lined up as the slot, just ran a little hook pattern, made sure he had enough yardage for the first down and took the pass from Freshetti. Just a simple little pattern in, a, in the zone coverage. First and 10 for the Bobcats. They'll send Brzezanski to the near side as a wingman. Styles and Wilson will flank to the left. The pitch is to Kunkel running to the left, trying to run behind. Travis Big Eye turns it upfield and is hogtied and brought down by Travis and Grody, who got him by the collar. That's exactly how he did it. Just brought him down, got one hand on the back of his jersey, and as you said, dragged him down by the collar. Travis is ahead of him if he can turn the corner. Wilson and Styles to the near side. Now the lone setback is Morningstar. Freshetti will run to the near side, throws back over the middle. Clawson has it complete at the 48-yard line of Berlin. Finished off on the play by Harry Ritchie. Similar pattern to what Clawson ran before. Just, a, just a, ran 
ran out about uh, almost eight or nine yards and just turned the play inside. What was nice about that pass from Prochetti was he threw it in in traffic, and he threw it in just about the only place that Clawson could get it. He threw it a little bit low and to his left to make sure that Clawson would be the only person that could make that catch. And it was a nice throw by Greg Prochetti, especially uh, on a rollout pass. Third down and a long two from the 48-yard line of the Mountaineers. They'll go from the I formation this time. Christopher at tailback, dual receivers to the left. Prochetti changes the cadence, gives the ball to Christopher. Christopher jukes down to the 45-yard line, still on his feet, down to the 43, and that'll be good enough for a Blairsville first down. W.J. Cobra finally brought him down, but he just kept jitterbugging at the line of scrimmage and made something happen there, Bill. Well, I'll say, nice second and third effort that time by Brian Christopher. It looked like they had him. He, he clearly had the first down. By left. But you mentioned another two minutes or so, it will be with the Bobcats. I formation, Styles the lone flanker to the right. The man in the slot is Wilson. They'll go up the gut to Morningstar. Nice haul off left tackle. Morningstar into the secondary. 30, 25, and down to the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. And saving a touchdown is W.J. Cover. So about a 25-yard gain on that play. Bobcats took over with, what, 518 to, to 518, play, Bill? right. So yeah. another nice long drive. This drive started at the Blairsville 31. Prochetti gives the ball to Kunkel. Kunkel across the 19-yard line, maybe the 18. Down on the play, but there is an injured Bobcat down. And I think it is, I can't tell for sure. We're not even going to speculate so we can see. Uh, there's a player down with 160. Bentley Development offers continued support of the Blairsville football team and all the other activities of our neighborhood children. And back in Blairsville, the Bobcats have the ball second and 10. Greg Kunkel was the injured player, but he got up and walked off under his own power. Appeared to have hurt either his hip or his back. Penalty flags are down, and the, the screen pass is incomplete. They were looking for Ryan Morningstar at the 20-yard line, but flags on the play again. And it was basically the same play that we've seen them run with Morningstar before, with Braschetti rolling right. Morningstar, kind of the safety valve receiver just out in front of uh, Prochetti. He dumps, tries to dump the plus right now. Christopher in the I formation is about 12 yards behind Prochetti. Prochetti fakes the handoff. There's the ball of Rosansky nice wide open at the five and a touchdown. Great fake. Prochetti faked the ball to the first man through. Brzezanski went on a fly pattern and Greg hit him at the five for the touchdown. A nice call there by the offensive coordinator, Frank Brzezanski, and his son Jason is in the end zone. I'll tell you what makes that play, uh, you have to sell that fake, and that's exactly what Greg Prochetti did, uh, faking that inside handoff. The defense came up, the linebackers came up, even the, the safety men came up, and Brzezanski just coming off the line of scrimmage from the tight end position, got behind the defenders, and then it was just a matter of Prochetti dumping the football out there for him, and it was a nice throw by uh, Greg Prochetti, but a well-executed play and a great fake by Prochetti to make that work. And the Bobcats will call timeout with 50. The last 19 coming on the 12-yard pass to Jason Brzezanski. Hauser to attempt the extra point at the post to the right. Prochetti puts it down. Hauser boots it up. It is straight and through and good. So it's 14-0. The Bobcats with 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. So again, we were talking about long drives, sustained drives, and uh, 69 yards is a nice-looking drive, especially when it uh, takes uh, nearly not quite five minutes off now that the linebackers were in tight. And once you freeze that safety, too, once he buys the, the run play, uh, then Brzezanski was behind him, and it was just a matter of getting him the football. Hauser will kick off, and we'll see whether they kick it long or try the line drive play. It's the long kick for Hauser, and it will come down to be taken by four, who stumbles, fumbles the football at the 14, now picks it up, tries to get around Wilson, who falls down. He's got a, a hold of the outside, gets through the 45, 50, Hauser has a chance for him. He steps by him, and Four is going to go for a touchdown. Four is going to go for a touchdown. 82 yards. Oh, my goodness. From almost imminent disaster to a big play for You know what was really, Berlin. really close about that play, too, Vince, is what he went down on his knees when the football... Well, I stopped four as he made his first move, and what happened was Bill slipped, and that was all four needed to get to the outside. 
and they'll attempt the extra point. Now they'll kick it at the post to the left. Four will attempt the extra point. And it's a fake. They're going to look to throw, and Alicia Ogbaum is going to be dropped at the 15-yard line by Brett Ewing, who would have none of that. You know what? Ogbaum's looking like uh, nobody informed him about the fake. Four was the kicker. He ran away he from He ran away ball. from Ogbaum. Ogbaum sets the football down like let's, what I was... It was interested in was how well four would be able to kick the ball anyway he just run 82 yards for a touchdown sprinting down the sideline and then he has to, to kick the football on the extra point but then they uh, they fake it without apparently telling Ogbaugh he started that play that touchdown play from his knees as Bill said and the ball went over his head he got back up got it and ran it 82 yards amazing so it's 14 to 6 with 33 seconds to play Clawson will take it at the 20, 25, 30. Mike tries to slip through and is out to the 42-yard line where the Bobcats will put it in play first and 10. Well, we mentioned our six-minute scoring spurt that we've seen in each of the last two games. Maybe this is the, the turn to get on the board themselves. So we'll see if Blairsville can answer again. 17 seconds to play in the third period. Bobcats up 13 or 14 to 6. First and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Freshetti sets them in a passing formation. Dual receivers to each side and gives the ball to Kunkel coming through. And Greg is dropped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Coming up to make the stop with Harry Ritchie. And that's the end of the third quarter of play with the score of the Bobcats 14, Berlin 6. Bobcat football continues on Lucky FM 106 right after this. It feeds up to 16 hungry football fanatics for only $29.95. The Foodland Sandwich Ring from the Right Slice Deli. At your store for the season, Foodland. Yes. Oh, Philip the Fox here for Fox's Pizza, and we're supporting Blairsville football this year with one thing in mind. Football game uh, after uh, a quick start, uh, things slowed down in the middle period. Got excited at the end of the half but again. Right at the end of the third quarter, things really. Uh... Well, that's true. We did have an exciting right before halftime. That's right. The. Uh... The almost touchdown. Kunkel actually lost the yard on the plate to make it second and 11. The ball back at the 41-yard line. Dual receivers to the right. Brzezinski fakes the handoff. Throws to Brzezinski. Wide open again. And Brzezinski's going to go for a touchdown. He is untouched from the 40-yard line in. And the Bobcats have answered back. Same play. Same touchdown play as before. Brzezinski lining up at the tight end. Brzezinski makes a great fake inside to Kunkel. And Brzezanski goes right down the middle of the field. Brzezanski gets the football to him. And the uh, officials in the middle of the field saying the touchdown is good. Uh, apparently there was some penalty against... Uh, Not really sure what the penalty was. Not sure either. A 58-yard touchdown pass will be assessed on the extra point. So Jess Hauser gets the fortune of attempting a 35-yard extra point. And the Bobcats are going to go for it. Abditori elects to go for it. 11.52 to go in the game. The Bobcats score with 53 seconds to go in the third period. Matt Four ran that kickoff back. The Bobcats go running just three plays, or two plays, actually, mm -hmm. and getting into the end zone again. A 58-yard drive. Bobcats will go for it. Perchetti will throw. Looking to throw for Clawson, heading toward the flag, and in and out of Mike's hands at the goal line. The pass was a little high, so the conversion is no good. 20-6 to six now, the Bobcats lead. And, and again, that comes, from, that comes from the Berlin defense coming up tough on the run, but uh, that can hurt you in, in that situation. The only question in that play was whether or not Jason would hang on to the football. He did with the ball right there. Oh, and as soon as the crowd saw that Jason wrapped his hands around the ball and actually had it, that was the only thing that could have possibly gone wrong, and it wasn't close. Hauser will kick it again, and now they try the short line drive slip. And the ball will be picked up by and fumbled. And I think the Bobcats are going to get it. It's loose on the ground. Jason Bear fumbles the football. And yes, indeed, Marty Foreman comes up with the football. The senior playing his final game in Blairsville, and it's a night to remember because Bill Coleman was Marty on the spot. Ball's on the football and has the fumble recovery. Dual receivers to the left out of the eye formation for Frichetti. First to 10 to pass to the Clawson. Halfback option, Styles is open, but the ball is intercepted by W.J. Cover. 
and Cobra is coming down the sideline and is brought down at the 24-yard line. This season's going out with a bang. That's all there is to it. Taking the kickoff. Styles was open for a second, but Cobra came out of nowhere to intercept the football. Brandt gives the football to John Troja, and Troja is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and brought down. Kunkel made the stop, Stuyvesant made the stop. So things settling down just a bit there with a, just a run into the line. 10.59 to go. In the football game, and for that matter, the 1992 season for Blairsville. Berlin will go on and play Chestnut Ridge next week. High formation now. Single receiver is Matt Nackage to the near side. Second and 11, Brant will throw three men in the pattern, and the pass is incomplete. They were looking for the tight end. That was Travis and Grody. And Watson, who led the Appalachian Conference in the interceptions as a cornerback last year, moving to free safety this year, not getting them, but really they haven't faced a passing attack that that's has exactly given Mike, right. Mike a chance to intercept. Most of the teams that the Bobcats have faced have been on the ground. Brandt is now running the option, coming to the near side, turns it upfield, breaks the tackle, has the first down, and is brought down at the 36-yard line. Jess Hauser ran him down from the backside. That's the first time we've really seen the option from uh, Berlin tonight. And Mike France doing a pretty good job of running it, picking up the first down. Much like Greg Frischetti, uh doesn't run it often, but when he does run it, he, uh, he does a pretty good job of it. First and 10 now for Berlin. They trail 20 to six, but a minute ago, it was 14 to six. High formation, man to the left. That is Matt Four. Brant will throw, looking for four all the way, but he will be hit and fumbles the football. It's loose and picked up by Dwight Herman. And Herman is going to be brought down at the 10-yard line. DJ Doak came in to level the boom. I think that Brant was just trying to get rid of it. I think he thought he was throwing it away. And the worst that he would come away with is maybe a, a grounding penalty. But uh, the officials say it was a, a fumble and Rich Renzi wants an explanation over on the uh, Berlin sideline. DJ Doak came out of nowhere. Brand turned around to throw the football. Doak was in his face so he just let go of it to try to avoid the loss and the referee ruled that he didn't throw it. And then Dwight Herman picks it up. It's first and goal from the 10. Actually it's first and 10 from just outside the 10. They get a first down at about the half yard line. Freshetti as penalty flies go down gives the ball to Christopher and Christopher is down to the six-yard line, but hang on, folks, this one's coming back. Yeah, this looks like another uh, illegal pursuit. No, no it's the Blairsville players are signaling against the... Uh, it is ineligible player. They must have had, count, Bill, 11 men on the field, 12 men. Well, one's going off, so if they still have 11 Yes, there was 12 men on the field. So that's where the penalty comes. Quince alone, though. First and five from the five and a half yard line. The backs are split behind Perchetti. Fakes the morning star, gives it to Kunkel. Kunkel with the five and into the end zone for a Blairsville touchdown. So Kunkel is in and the senior is in for his second touchdown. A Kunkel with a five yard run. And again, another turnover sets up that play. Yeah, well, that's what I was just going to say. Uh, we've, <laughs> there was about three or four turnovers when you really think about it. If you go back to the play where Blairsville kicked off after the last touchdown, uh, the ball lays on the ground, Blairsville recovers. On the very next play, they turn it over on an interception. And then uh, a couple plays later, Berlin uh, coughs up the football and sets up Blairsville for this score. Hauser's kick is straight and true and good with nine minutes and one second to play in the ball game. And that makes the score now on the positive side of it rather than the other side. Uh, they've seen the other side. This is much better. He's much more fun. Abditore making sure that his seniors go out at 92. Having fun. Hauser will kick off. High and end over end. And coming down to Jason Bear, 25-30. 35, cuts it up field. And is brought down at about the 36-yard line. 
Eric Elliott was in there to get his mitts on the tackle. Wilson also there. So with 8.52 to go in the football game. So when you think about it, actually, there have been four touchdowns scored in about half the time that it took Blairsville to drive in the first half, right before halftime. And not score. And not score. <laughs> Change game. They'll go from the power eye or rather the wishbone formation now. Brant calling the signal and is going to run the option to the near side. Brant turns it upfield. Wesley Hopkins throws himself at Brant at the 37-yard line. Or rather the 42-yard line. So that'll be a gain of five. Actually, out of the huddle they come. They'll go from the wishbone formation again. Brant sets his team. Calling the signal. Rolling to the near side. Pitches the ball back to Matt Nackage. Nackage turns the corner and is tripped up at about the 45-yard line. Morningstar comes up to make the stop along with DJ Doak. I'm pretty proud of myself. I haven't called him DJ Dozier all season. <laughs> now we're seeing Ken Main come into the lineup for the Bobcats. Sophomore, placing Jess Hauser. Brandt sets him on third and one. The backs are split behind him, calling the signal. Gives the ball to the first man through. That is Toha. And Troja has the first down. Kind of a saving tackle that time by Weston. To remember the bye. We talked about Prochetti approaching a thousand yard passing. I would think he would have to be pretty close if he's not over. The draw play is to Troja, and Troja buries his way down to the 42 yard line of Blairsville where Kunkel wrestles him to the turf. I would think he would have to be very close too, Bill, but uh, we don't have the passing statistics here in Just the booth. Did, but he, he did hit the 58-yarder to Przanski, and uh, he hit a 19-yarder to Przanski. So, uh, and he also hit the long pass. He's well over, Lawson. well over 100 yards this season. From the wishbone formation at second and seven, Brant sets his team. Maybe we can tend to do it all on the ground here. And as I say that, Brant will throw, but he is going to be wrestled to the turf by Jess Hauser. All the way back at the 48, and Hauser is going to get a penalty for celebrating. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Bill, but I know that's the correct call. The referee is making the right call there, but I, I just think that that rule needs to be looked at. Uh, it, it's uh, just Hauser just enjoying the play. He made a nice defensive play, and even Ed Vittori can't be angry at him. Called him over to the sideline. He's going to counsel him a little bit, but uh, Hauser just made a nice defensive play, got in, and... Uh, and that's not the play, Bill, so I've got to take it back. Well, that's good. I'm glad to see that. Isn't it? It's a personal foul against Berlin, and the player that committed it is ejected from the game. It's Elisha Hockbaugh. But we're not he's sure. The who, he's the player who went off the sideline. I don't know if he's the player who's ejected. Personal foul, and that man is to go in the 1992 season. 27-6 Bobcats lead. Bill and I will be right back. Bill football on Lucky 106.3 FM. And back at Blairsville Stadium. Vince Capozzi and Bill Brown with you. Brant will throw on third and 30, looking to throw the ball out and incomplete. Wes Hopkins dives for the ball at the 45-yard line, but it falls incomplete, and that will bring up a fourth down situation for Berlin. Looks like Tom Yost was the intended receiver, but uh, Brant overthrew him. And as you said, Wes Hopkins had probably the best shot of trying to, to make a catch. So Berlin will punt. Tom Yost in punt formation, and it will be Christopher and Wilson back. Yost gets the snap. Return is on. Line drive kick. Wilson will let it hit. It takes a Bobcat bounce at the 45-yard line, and that is where it will be down by Berlin with 5.30 to play in the football game. The nice people we met and uh, really enjoyed it. Morningstar takes the handoff and dances his way out to the 49 and falls forward to the 49-yard line now of Berlin. So a four-yard gain. And uh, really impressed, Bill, with the enthusiasm of, of the, the community for their Bobcats. Um, Great. Second and seven from the 49-yard line of Berlin and Freschetti with the back split. 
pitches the ball to Morningstar. Morningstar, or rather Kunkel, turns the corner and gets down to the 48-yard line. Six from the 48. Greg inside handoff to Ryan Morningstar, and Morningstar follows Dwight Herman down to the 46-yard line where it will be fourth down for the Bobcats. Tra and four. Travis and Grody coming up to He's make He's in there. Sokolosa will kick. Four is back along with Bear and Sokolosa kicks the air out of the ball again. Four takes it at the 15. Cuts laterally at the 20. Turns the corner at the 25 and is brought down on a nice open field tackle by Corey Bracken at the 26 yard line. A nice play by Corey Bracken. We mentioned he's one of the 27-6 lead with 2.33 to go in the 1992 season and it's going to end on a high note for Blairsville. Brandt running the option, turns the ball upfield, runs into Brett Ewing and goes down at the 31 yard line. Now we're seeing Marty Foreman check in. As you mentioned earlier, this is not the last game of the season for Berlin. Uh, they have a game next week against uh, Chestnut Ridge, another District 5 uh, team. Interesting that the Bobcats only play nine football games yeah. in a 10 week season. Power eye formation now, second down and five for Berlin as we are under two minutes to go in the game. The pitch will come out to the near side and it will be taken by Jack Gumber. Gumber turns up field, has the first down at the 46 yard line where Eric Eamon brings him down. Dom at Lone. Call or stop by our Route 22 office or visit our office in downtown Blairsville. ST Bank, an equal housing lender, member FDIC. You're listening to Blairsville Football on Lucky 106.3 FM. And back at Blairsville Stadium with 1.41 to go in the football game. Dual receivers to the right for Bowler Lynn. Dual receivers to the left. Brandt trying to run the option to the near side. Turns the corner. Is across midfield and into Bobcat territory where Wade Kudowski will knock him out of bounds at the 46-yard line as Abdatori empties his bench. Brandt with a pretty nice play that time. Again, uh, mentioning the fact that he's done well running the option. And they're going without a huddle. Dual receivers to each side, and Brandt will throw. Gets good protection. Looking to throw long over the middle, and the ball is broken up. Knocked down by John Kunkelman at the 30-yard line. Kunkelman sitting back in the free safety position. Uh, uh, Laurel Valley won that game. Late in the game, as I remember, yeah. they scored to win that football game. Minute 19 to go in the game now. Second and 10. Brant calling the signals. Drops back. Looks to throw. Gets good protection. Home run ball going long for Cobra, and the pass is incomplete. Broken up by Chad Slezak. Chad Slezak, one of the players who will be back next year. He's a junior. There's definitely a nucleus here for for Abdatori in 1992 or 93 uh, season, and we heard him say that he'd like to see his players uh, hit the weight room a little bit more next season, uh, and he'd like to see some of them go off to uh, to football camp. Dedication football is no longer just a three-month sport; it is year-round. From the wishbone, Brant is going to be hit in the backfield and dropped by J.D. Hogger. Loss of seven on the play. All the way back to the 47-yard line. Real nice defensive play that time by Hogger. So Halloween Eve turns out to be good for the Bobcats. 33 seconds to go. Berlin from the power eye. Brandt fakes the handoff and is looking to throw two men long, but he's got to get around Moorhead, and Sean Moorhead will slow him up enough for... Eric Elliott to come in and bury him back at the 36-yard line. And that stops the clock with 20 seconds to go. And Blairsville will hold and go over on offense. And Wade Kredofsky will get a chance at quarterback. So indeed, Greg Fraschetti has directed his last offensive series. What a good night for Greg. Greg had a terrific night. Uh, touchdown passes to uh, two of them, to Jason Brzezanski, one covering 58 yards, one covering 19 yards. 
He also hit a long pass play uh, to uh, uh, Mike Clawson that almost got them a touchdown in the first half. Nine seconds to go. The Bobcats will break the huddle. We'll see if they elect to run another play. Three, two, one. Kredofsky will set them, but that's it. The 1992 football season has come to an end, and it ends on a positive note for the Blairsville Bobcats as they will take a 20 and 6 do the Berlin Mountaineer, or rather 2 and 7 Berlin fall to.